How are we doing guys? Moves here, episode number three of our West Ham United career mode. As we come off a couple of fantastic victories to start the season, obviously defeating Tottenham Hotspur, our huge London rival, and then Crystal Palace, another team from London. Obviously not as big of a rival as Tottenham, but two huge victories to start off the season. And with that, we then head into our third Premier League game of the campaign at the Bowling Ground against Southampton. So, huge game, obviously. Mix the team up a little bit. Uh, Bron Carroll to the starting lineup. Downing will be playing up front. Obviously, Carroll scored that huge goal in the last episode to beat Crystal Palace. And then Zarate just hadn't impressed me too much um, in the last outing, so I decided to give Downing a run in that cam position where he's been he's featured so well for West Ham during the real-life Barclays Premier League season. So decided to give him a go. We'll take on Southampton, who's playing a 4-1-4-1 uh, with Shane Long. We're going to create some problems for us up top. But... Andy Carroll plays a beautiful one to the Dallas Stones. Get things started underway, but a nice save by Frazier Forster, the former Celtic goalkeeper, uh, in the net for Southampton now. And he makes a big save on Andy Carroll. But Southampton then come back the other way. Bertrand plays a free kick in for the head along. It's cleared away only as far as Jack Cork, though. He plays it in to Jay Rodriguez, has a shot, and it's well saved by Adrian. And then simply cleared away. Then Valencia then coming the other way here in the 12th minute. Gets a little bit of space. Tries to create something in the middle of the field. Plays it across to Alexander Song. He then plays the ball through to Mark Noble, who has a shot. And Forster again gets down well to save the shot by Mark Noble. Reed then trying to clear the ball. Just gets it only as far as Andy Carroll. Nice little back heel. Flicks the ball to Stuart Downing. He plays over the top to enter Valencia. He's got plenty of pace. He does well. Brings it down on his feet here. Cuts inside of Gierdos. Plays it through to Downing. He should score. What a save by Forster. It's a goal that Downing should be putting away time in. And time again, but he's able to do so. Cresswell then plays a 1-2 with Alexander Song. Song whips the ball back out to Aaron Cresswell. He plays into Valencia. He gets a step on his defender. He's free inside the box. And it's a simple finish for Enter Valencia. The Ecuadorian with a fantastic goal. So just seconds after Stuart Downing failed to put Valencia's uh, through ball in behind Forster. Aaron Cresswell then plays the ball through for Valencia to run on to behind the defense. And he just simply slides it under the outstretched Southampton goalkeeper to make things 1-0 in favor of West Ham United. So fantastic goal from Valencia. Good play. Obviously at home we look to be taking the game to him. I think we've been playing really well. So it's a fantastic goal from Valencia. Obviously his second goal in the Premier League. Uh, so that's fantastic to see. Obviously his first came against Tottenham with a goal to put things away. But Downing then ranging forward. And I'll tell you what, Downing, the one thing that's really nice playing with him in that game position is he's so good on the ball. Valencia with some great skill but a weak shot. Uh, poor finish, but Downing, I'll tell you what, he is so much fun to run at pace at defenders with the ball, like we're doing right here. Comes in, just attacking the defenders. He actually tries to finesse shot, it's deflected, and it's a simple save by Forster that ends up being cleared away. So, a couple of good chances for Downing. Southampton then trying to create something here. Bertrand with the ball on the left wing, the Chelsea Loney, plays the ball into Jack Cork. He then turns inside to Morgan Schneiderlin. Schneiderlin does well, gets the ball to Davis. He has a shot, and it just flashes wide of Adrian's post to keep things, and that would be how the game would end. So a 1-0 victory on the strength of an Air Valencia goal. Southampton did hold the better possession, but obviously we had the chances. Some really good ones. Carroll had a lot of shots on target, uh, but Valencia, the man that puts it in the back of the net, and your man of the match was actually Aaron Cresswell uh, over in the left back position. So really good to see the youngster come in and do really well for us. Uh, from here, we then get a uh, injury notice. Enter Valencia, this is a huge note will be out for three weeks. He sprained his ankle in training, and that is huge to lose our top goal scorer so early in the season, especially with some big games coming up. So disappointing to lose Valencia there. But we get a note on our goalkeeper, Tom Thomas, that we signed to our youth squad. And take a look at his overall potential, 79 to 94 already. He's gone up. It, I think his original potential range was 73 to 94. He's now up to 79 to 94. So he should be a fantastic player and someone that we have in the team for the future. Come against Brentford, who is then in the Capital One Cup playing a 4-1-4-1 against us as they look to maybe nick some nick a victory uh, against them on play. We've mixed the team up severely. Morrison's in, Poyet, Mafaton, Jarvis, Nolan, Carroll, Demel, Reese Burke, and Collins actually in. Reese Burke, the youngster, 17 year old, getting into the starting lot. So we get pretty much. Uh, the entire rotated squad, O'Brien playing it right back. And Brentford here with an early chance. Yaskaline, I don't know if it's a cross or a shot. It's tough to tell from Hogan, but Yaskaline does just enough to get the ball away and keep things scores. And then early on, 26 minutes, and we already get a huge notice. Robin Morrison, 
Uh, it was a cleared ball by the goalkeeper. He went up for a challenge, came down awkwardly on his ankle, and he's gone over and needs to be subbed off. He's not even able to get up, so we're forced to make an early change. Mark Noble will have to come off the bench for Ravel to slot in center midfield uh, alongside Diego Poyet. So from there, Noble's come onto the pitch. Carroll then plays a nice one to uh, Kevin Nolan. Poyet plays the ball through to Matty Jarvis, and Jarvis! Oh, that could be goal of the season, Kande. Already, Jarvis with an absolutely stupendous finesse finish from the edge of the box here in the 29th minute to give us a 1-0 away lead at Brentford here in the Capital One Cup. Beautiful ball played forward, and Jarvis just takes one touch and decides to ping it from 20 yards, and that is a fantastic strike. Look at it into the top right corner. No chance for the goalkeeper at full stretch, and that is an unbelievable finesse shot from the winger. So the England man gives us the 1-0 lead. It's fantastic to see. Noble then playing the ball forward to Andy Carroll. Some nice passing here. Plays the ball through to Kevin Nolan. He comes, has the shots blocked, and just flashes wide the left post from the Brentford goalkeeper. But it leads to us getting a corner here. Jarvis then to whip it in the 33rd minute. Plays it forward. Looking for the head of Mark Noble. It's played around, and Noble's on hand. Slots it away. 2-0 West Ham United. So a fantastic goal from Mark Noble there as uh, the captain, uh, or Vice captain, I should say. Technically, Nolan's the captain. But I think I let Noble have the armband in this game still, if I remember. No, Nolan might have it. But uh, Noble on hand, the corner just bundled around. It lays on the goal line for him, and he just smashes it across the net, passes it into the back of the net, essentially, to give us the lead. Now, I think, uh, yeah, Nolan does have the captain's armband for this game. So Noble, uh, our vice captain, getting on the score sheet. Mr. West Ham, hammer of the year last year for West Ham, comes and gets a goal, but then T-Bar here turns inside of Mark Noble, Noble just gives him a bit too much space, and from 25 yards, he hits an absolute stunner, so he says, Matthew Jarvis, your finesse shot, I see you, but I'm going to come forward and hit an absolute bomb of my own, so Brentford gets back in the game on an absolute stunner from T-Bar, and fair play to him, this is just a beautiful shot, this is a world-class strike, I'll tell you what, he poor defending by me with Mark Noble, but once he gets inside Noble, he just has enough space. He's not able to cut inside the defense, and he just decides, look, at, we got the back line there, holding him off, holding him off, holding him off. He decides, I'm just going to smash it in the top right-hand corner. So a fantastic goal from T-Bar. Uh, but Nolan then plays Andy Carroll through here in the 56th minute. The big lad comes through. Sir Andrew Carroll lays it back to Kevin Nolan, and his shot goes just wide of the Brentford post. So another good chance. Amalfitano switches the play out to Matt Jarvis here in the 63rd minute. He lays it back to Joey O'Brien. Joey O'Brien into Kevin Nolan. He plays it forward to Andy Carroll. Carroll decides to have a shot, and it's just inches wide of the post. So we're getting closer and closer to that decisive uh, third goal that would essentially put the game away for us. But Guy Mel, who's picked up a knock here, but he's playing on really well. Plays the ball forward to Carl and Cole. That's his first touch after coming on as a substitute. He then lays the ball forward through to Guy DeMel. DeMel does really well to get past the challenge of Bidwell. And he's got so much space now to play the ball forward. He lays it to Carroll. Carroll with the back heel. And Carlton Cole with the simplest goal that he may ever score in his career. It's all made by one, the run of Guy DeMel, and then this beautiful back heel from Andy Carroll. So much work to do as the ball was played into him, and he just lays it off beautifully to Carlton Cole, who's unmarked right on the edge of the six-yard box, and it's a simple side-footed finish into the back of the net. So it's a fantastic goal, well worked, a great run on the wing by DeMel, uh, getting forward from his right back position, which I love to see. I love the overlapping fullbacks. Uh, and how they get involved for us. So DeMel does well, plays it into Carroll. It's a beautiful back heel. And Carlton Cole, a really good servant of West Ham, gets his first goal of the season here. Jarvis has a chance. Cole then looking for his second. He just touches it too strong. It allows Button to come out and claim that ball. We're looking for the fourth just to add insult to injury. Nolan with a huge chance on a beautiful header in from Jarvis. It's another fantastic save from the keeper. Then Ricardo Vasta using a nice little double step over to get inside a defender. Has a shot. It's a good save by the keeper. Cleared away by Brentford. And that would be all she wrote. The referee will blow the full-time whistle. And that will do it. A 3-1 victory as we advance in the Capital One Cup. Obviously, you're going to expect us to advance against a team like Brentford. But they did give us a bit of adversity in the early gun. They actually outplayed us, I would say, for probably from the time... Up until Ravel Morrison got injured, I thought we were being outplayed. Uh, Morrison got injured, and from there we stepped our game up, dominated the game, ended up with eight shots on target to their one. 
10 to their 6 in total. And Matt Jarvis uh, was able to win man of the match. So good to see Jarvis. Also, he hasn't been breaking into the lineup just because of the formation we've been playing in the Premier League. That narrow formation doesn't really allow for wingers. But he's definitely making a case for himself to get into the starting lineup more often. And we get some news here. Ravel Morrison with a broken ankle will be out three months. And that is going to be a huge hindrance. One to his development also to give us that depth in the center of the park in that cam position. And then Guy Demel, who you saw, was playing injured at the latter stages of the game. I actually subbed him off right before the end. Uh, but he has a broken toe, and he'll be out for two months. So that's another huge injury. It really puts us weak on cover at the back now, as Jenkinson will not really have any cover, uh, except for Joey O'Brien, who will be basically our backup left back and right back, because... We now don't have Guy Demel, which is a disappointment. We also get a note from Carroll that he had been worried about his place in the side. And also, he's done well in the couple games he's coming. He scored against Crystal Palace. He also uh, assisted here uh, in the game against Brentford. So, Carroll doing well getting involved. So, that's fantastic to see. Uh, and, you know, it's not that he's going to lose his place in the squad. It's just that we have enough players that we have competition for those positions. And basically, he has to play really well to be able to get into the lineup, which is the way it should be at a good club. You want to have that depth and you want to have that competition for places in the lineup, and I think that's what we have right now and why it's going to lead to hopefully a successful uh, opening campaign for us. But that's all uh, yet to be seen. We're in the early stages here, and we hope to continue our good play in the next episode. But that's going to be it for me in this episode, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. Be sure to comment, uh, let me know feedback, leave a like, subscribe so you can see all the future episodes. And we'll see you back in episode four uh, coming up soon. So, guys, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.